What's going on there guys? Good morning, good afternoon. It is the Earth Master here on the live stream uh, with an update video. Got a lot going on today. Wednesday, March 30th, 2022, about 1046 AM California time. And latest quake shows a 3.1 on the globe. But the big story right now, we just got an X flare from a solar spot kicking up right now. Major blackout on the Earth side sunlit side of the earth from an x-class flare um, just coming in here to the graphs um, they have not updated the uh, the exact measurement of this x flare looks like uh, right there x 1.3 coming in to the uh, to the graphs right now that's a pretty major flare from the uh, culprit which of course is the sunspot that has been uh, causing all sorts of issues here it's going to be this one right uh this little baby right here creating that x flare i'm going to go ahead and screen capture that real quick just because uh that is a pretty important signature there from the sunspot with all this ongoing activity stand by for just a second x 1.3 flare coming in currently that sunspot region is uh, 2975 I knew this thing was gonna pop off something uh, we were looking at a 10% chance of an X flare but uh, that has definitely been achieved from this uh, this troublesome sunspot it's definitely been uh, ongoing for a couple days now all of this comes along with an incoming G3 class storm expected later uh, into the overnight and throughout the day tomorrow looking at uh, a whole lot going on here folks some crazy stuff look at the d layer absorption map predictions right over the central america area north america as well this causes some major major uh, effect on the high frequency range high frequency 3 to th uh, 30 mhz uh, a lot of uh, blackouts i'm sure being observed in the uh uh, looks like the ham radio cb band and pro uh, possibly short wave radio uh, frequencies being affected uh, let's see what else we got here that's pretty uh it's a little on the crazy side this is a pretty strong x flare for sure the detailed forecast here at least this may get upgraded uh they're po possibly talking about this turning into a g4 storm now that's a severe uh class storm a geomagnetic storm right now we're looking at at least a g3 uh, early on the 31st of March, uh, but as this forecast mentions, chance of a G4 or greater or greater geomagnetic storm. So, man, if this gets up into the G4 category, a uh, good chance that we could see uh, the auroras here into the California range, uh, Northern California. Right now with the G3 uh, class uh, storm expected, looks like Illinois, uh, into the uh, Oregon area could see those storms later tonight the Aurora forecast so we will definitely be watching that right now the KP indexes are minimal we're waiting on the arrival of the multiple CMEs and now we got this major X flare to deal with as well uh, we are just taking uh, quite a beating here in the terms of space weather and solar weather events I uh, want to check out uh, the other site here, spaceweather.com. There's a lot to discuss here today, folks. I wish I could just post this and then uh, get it up on YouTube, but there's so much more I got to include here on this update video. Uh, these folks are, uh, let's see, Solar X, yeah, X1. These folks are showing the X ray as a 1. Of course, we know it's a 1.3 on the maximum level. Uh, let's see here. I don't see anything new on this site so uh, I do want to jump into real quick what's been going on here at the trimmer map as you know I watch this site very closely every day every night every morning almost 24 hours a day and I've been doing my update videos and you know we've been checking this map right and it's been showing zero for many days now well it seems as though they have just added a massive amount of trimmer activity onto the Cascadia subduction zone here uh, into the West Coast region. This here is from yesterday. 940 epicenters. That's a mega amount of trimmer. So that's probably one of the larger ones I've seen until 
uh, went back to the previous days and we've seen numbers increase 972 uh, one of these days had over a thousand epicenters of tremor along the Cascadia subduction zone that's a pretty big deal so not only have th has this info been held back I don't know if somebody's been on vacation there at the PNSN network or what but They've been, um, they've been kind of holding back on reporting the data. And last night, it seems as though after I did my update, because uh, I could have swore I checked it, and it still said zero. Seems like sometime after I did my update, they threw in all of these massive amounts of trimmers over the last week or so. And we're talking about a significant amount each day. I want to go back to, I believe it all started right around the 22nd or so. Uh, we had about 300 and something. I want to show you guys the amounts here. Look at this. Look at this movement. There's a lot of activity here along the Cascadia over the last couple days, last few days. Who knows what? Who knows how long they've been not reporting this activity? So it looks as though, go back to the 16th or so. There was some in, uh, so it looks like the 18th is when this all started to pop up in a big way. There's the 19th, 235, that's right. So let's go from the 19th to uh, today. And see what we got. So last 10 days of trimmer activity, folks. I think you guys are going to be pretty well impressed. So this is 6,622 epicenters of trimmer along the Cascadia. I have never seen it that high. Uh, in all my years of watching this activity. I think this is something very significant ongoing here that we need to pay close attention to, not only with the uh, solar weather activity that's incoming, but this number here, 6,622 epicenters of trimmer, a significant amount. Most of it uh, looks like almost possibly the entire area up here to the northern part of the Cascadia. And the... Uh, Cascadia is in these lines right here. Locked area is going to be just offshore a little bit, a little bit upstream. These red, these uh, red circles here are down dip downstream at about 30 kilometers or so uh, from the locked area, which sits up here to the uh, to the west and upstream towards the surface. That's a lot of uh, a lot of trimmer, and I've always said that this amount of trimmer, or any amount of trimmer, ultimately continues to build strain up here along the locked area and I just don't know why these folks have not been reporting it for the last seven days it seems it's weird I appreciate the comment someone noted it last night on my update video that uh, to check out the previous days that they added a whole bunch on so all of these epicenters appearing out of the blue um, not cool PNSN kind of you know, it's. I thought this was like uh, automated automated data systems up here. You know, showing the activity. But uh, I think pe people have control of what we're able to see, how much they're putting out. Who knows? There could be more than this. There could be a couple thousand each day popping off. Now, now, I don't trust these folks. I do not trust uh, these guys whatsoever. I'm going to send an email to someone there at the PNSN network right now or after this update video and find out what's going on why they failed to report the last seven eight days of activity here on this on this large scale event that's taking place here along the cascadia that's a big number folks we got to pay close attention to uh, what's going on here along this mega thrust area as far as earthquake activity goes in this region we're not seeing a whole lot and then again who knows if they're reporting it you know it's just it's each day that goes on and each event that happens like this where they're hiding things it's just it's unreal and it just makes me a uh, super suspicious of these agencies that monitor the activity so these guys are showing nothing now that no microquakes nothing going on throughout the pacific northwest yellowstone activity is still continuing uh did see some movement here along the seismographs i wish i had some type of seismograph to monitor the slow slip events going on at the Cascadia but I don't think that's possible um, it's a little bit different setup when it comes to monitoring the slow slip event trimmers compared to subsequent or compared to like uh, uh, these earthquakes that give off a different signal such as these spikes 
here at Yellowstone and there's still quite a bit going on here at Yellowstone National Park. Uh, northwest corner of the park, Maple, Maple Creek still seeing a, a pretty good influx of microquakes throughout the region. A uh, good 20 or 30 earthquakes listed there on the map. All microquakes. The USGS was doing a pretty good job here yesterday and looks like possibly today as well uh, reporting these earthquakes but there's definitely a lot more uh, that needed to be added onto the map from the past few hours but uh, yesterday they actually did a pretty sufficient job of uh, reporting uh, quite a few of the earthquakes that came into the region i don't know if they reported them all but hey they're on there 124 earthquakes or so within the region of yellowstone and um, i estimate there was probably a little bit more than that about 200 uh, but now with today's activity definitely more than the 200 number but they're definitely jumping on it um, so yeah uh, looking at regional earthquake activity folks uh, we're getting a, quite a bit of train of movement up here through the pretty much uh, Kermadec Trench area all up around the bend through Papua New Guinea and even areas around the Java Trench over here 5.0 63 kilometers a whole bunch of fours kicking off no major earthquake activity to report at the moment, but I think we should be on guard with this incoming solar storm, uh, the incoming X-ray event that's coming on, the X1.3 that just struck the sun, uh, which is now the effects are being felt here on Earth from the flare itself. Uh, not for sure if that thing produced a CME or not, but I'm sure it did. Uh, that will also be Earth-directed. Uh, earthquake activity on the big island. Of course, I think all of this is affected by solar weather and events right we're all connected as one uh, when it comes to weather and, and everything that kind of happens here right it's all kind of uh it's all kind of meant to be so to speak uh, southeast flank shown some activity today quite a few earthquakes 32 earthquakes on the big island uh, for now no major events happening there a little swarm of activity up here along the aleutian trench and the aleutian islands uh, eastern part of the country looks uh, a little active throughout Oklahoma, Kansas, or, uh, Oklahoma and uh, Arkansas region, just to the west of Arkansas, I should say, uh, in the state of Oklahoma there. Other than that, uh, man, just kind of waiting to see what's going to happen here with this event that's ongoing uh, with the X flare currently kicking up. Let's go back to the solar ham dot site. This is a pretty good event there. Definitely, uh, definitely a sizable event. We could see... We definitely could see a uh, G4 class storm, that's for sure. Um, let me back out here a second. Let me go over here to space weather. Here's potential for G3 storms. Um, power systems, voltage corrections may be required. Let me see if I can bring up uh, the 4 standby for just a second. So here's a G4 storm that uh, is possible. They mentioned G3 or G4 is stronger. So if we see this thing spike up here with these in incoming CMEs, uh, we're going to be under we're going to be under the gun. That's a pretty good uh, solar weather event, let me tell you. So G4 severe power systems, possible widespread voltage control problems, and some protective systems will mistakenly trip out key assets from the grid. Uh, spacecraft operations may experience surface charging and tracking problems. Corrections may be needed for orientation problems. Uh, other systems induced uh, pipeline currents affect preventative measures. Uh, HF radio prop propagation sporadic. Uh, satellite navigation degraded for hours. Low frequency radio na navigation disrupted. And Aurora has been seen as low as Alabama and Northern California. Woo! Well, unfortunately, we got cloudy skies out here right now, so I don't know if that's going to clear up by tonight or not. But I may have to go out there and see if I can uh, see if I can catch a uh, the aurora from this area if it does happen to get to that level. Stand by for a second. Let me check. Uh, uh, it doesn't look like. Uh, let me go back here. Do these guys not cover a five? nope i'm not seeing that but uh either way you get up into the five then we start getting some major events going on here <clears throat> but uh man for now uh be on guard folks there's a lot going on this thing could pop off who knows what another x flare 
Uh, it was, uh, I kind of want to show you guys the uh, chart here, the trend. We did spike a little bit here, had almost consistent M flares popping off. I think we had 10 or so, even though the solar ham site does not really show it. Uh, there was definitely a lot more mentioned on the space weather article. Uh, these guys, I'm not for sure what's going on. They're a little slow. But the data from the system here shows some uh, events stretching up into the M category right here, this line. Hopefully you guys can see it, the M over here. And then, of course, just now we had that X1.3 coming in. That's a pretty major uh, flare. And uh, let's see, this, we did have a downward trend. You see that? And a little spike up. Another downward trend, and then bam. So these things can just pop up out of the blue, um, regardless of these, uh, you know, if they're crackling with C flares or M flares currently, it's uh, these flares are going to do what they want to do, right? M, M flare, X flare, you name it. Uh, that's just a kind of just the beginning, I think, of this solar cycle. So we'll see how the uh, Earth's protective layer does tonight with the first CME coming in and then a double whammy coming up behind it uh, and then to throw on top of it this X flare so it's going to be quite the event folks let me t tell you all coming from 2975 uh, which just produced an X 1.3 flare so I'm going to cut this right now we will be back a little bit later on this evening um, to check the uh, to see how this uh, incoming CME is doing and see how uh, see how low these aurora is going to kick up here. We'll be back later, folks. Stay safe and uh, be prepared. Peace out, everyone.